Okay, um, there was a small technical glitch, so the first couple of minutes of the video were lost, but that means that if you just notice like a weird face transition about a couple, uh, a couple of minutes in, that's not a, nothing to worry about. I'm just imposing the, what I could say from the previous recording with the new version. Essentially, what I need to tell you now is uh, what operations you can perform on vectors. So if you think about numbers, which I'm calling scalars also, you can add numbers, multiply numbers, sometimes divide numbers as long as that one of them, the one in the denominator is not zero. Now with vectors, uh, you can try to do something similar. Not all the operations have analogs and so with some you have to be a bit more careful. But for now, what I'll do is explain to you a couple of operations you can perform on vectors uh, using their geometric interpretation. In the next video, I'll tell you how to, do, to actually do the calculations. So the most basic thing you can do with a vector, which again, remember from last time, a vector is nothing but an arrow with a certain size. So this is for me a vector which again, I'm allowed to move around as long as I don't change its size nor its uh, direction in space. So all these three vectors are being regarded as the same. And so one thing that you can do is take a number, right, which we also called a scalar. So you can do a scalar times a vector and you will get a new vector, okay? So what I'm going to tell you is how you can multiply a vector by a number or scalar and, and produce another vector. Uh, the idea is relatively straightforward. So say you take your favorite vector, B. Okay. And now uh, say I want to, what, what should 2B be? So, Maybe here's 2b. So what I mean by that is just take the ordinary, the original vector, double it, and don't change its direction. Okay? So here the scalar is like the number 2. Okay? And 2b uh, means. just means a vector which is uh, has the same direction but it's now twice as big okay now uh, one way in which scalars are typically denoted is uh, with the letter lambda and vectors well most of the time I'll call them B. So this ve new vector is called lambda B. So in this particular case, lambda equals two. This is like the number lambda here, okay? And say when lambda is positive, so this is a, let me explain what's going on when lambda is positive. So a positive scalar. So what happens, what's ha happening here is that, uh, say for lambda equals two, you just preserve the direction and make the vector twice as big. But also you could have taken lambda equal, equals one half. And as you might imagine, if you just write one half of B, right? It's the same story. Uh, it's the same direction, but now half as big. 
So here, and here lambda equals one half. So the point is that uh, when your scalar is a positive number, you're just preserving the direction and maybe making the vector bigger or smaller in size depending on whether lambda is greater than 1 or between 0 and 1. A more slightly more interesting case is lambda being 0. So again, you take a vector v and you want to say what you mean by 0v. So we want to try to define the vector 0v. And so here lambda will be 0. Well, and as you might suspect, uh, the size will be shrunk to 0. So what's some, a vector of size 0 is just like a point. And so the, this, the zero vector is just represented by a point, but as will become clear next time, it's actually useful to still keep track of the fact that you want to think of it as a vector, and so you put still the arrow on top of it, on top of it despite the fact that uh, so it has zero magnitude or not, no magnitude. And the direction is ill-defined. So, right, so I said that vectors usually require a magnitude and a direction, this is like a special case where you're happy to just give it size and you don't really care about saying where a point points in space, okay? So this is specific, uh, slightly different from the other cases. And then uh, there's a case when the lambda is negative. And well, the story is essentially the same as the one that I just did here. It's just that the, somehow uh, the directions get reversed. So say if you're going, if you start with b, and now you're going to do negative two b. So notice that it has the same size. Sorry, it's twice as big, but now opposite direction. So, but now you reverse the direction. Okay, and well, as you might expect, you could also take, you still start with V, but now you take a uh, negative one half of V, and so this would be kept become this. So now uh, it's half the size again, but now uh, reverse direction. Okay, so essentially this is uh, the first operation. Notice that you always get vectors after you multiply a vector by a scalar, okay? There will be other operations that will turn vectors into numbers, but this operation uh, turns vectors into new vectors. Um, and again, uh, this is how you would visualize this. In practice, we'll actually work with coordinates and so you'll see in the next video how you would do the computations. But for now this is like pictorially what's going on. Now there's another operation which is addition which you are also um, know a lot of. 
So let's talk about it vector addition. So what you should maybe just to emphasize is that um, if you were trying to add a scalar with a vector that will make no sense for us, so like a scalar plus vector, this would be ill-defined. We won't try to make sense of this. Okay, so there's no way for us to add like a, a number like three with one of these arrows. We don't know what that means. We do know what it means to say three times this arrow. That means you just took the arrow and made it three times bigger. But we don't know what it means to say three plus the arrow. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. But uh, we can make sense of a vector plus a vector. This will be a new vector, okay? Uh, so how is this supposed to go? Again, I'll give you the vi like the visualization of what's going on. Say you have a vector v, like this one. Somewhere else in the world, you have this other vector u. So what is v plus u or u plus v? So they will end up being the same, the same uh, way as 3 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 3. What we'll do, well, the issue here is that they're not communicating with each other. They're very far away. Uh, but that's okay because remember that I told you you can move the vectors around. So if you like, what you can do, I mean, you can just fix one and move the other. Uh, you can uh, move both of them, but you just have to move them in such a way. So I'm going to move this one here just because I feel like it. And I'm going to move this one. I could put it in different locations, but I will put it in a place in such a way that uh, this one begins where this one ends. Like this. So it, the initial point of U coincides with the final point of V. And if I do that, then I get a new vector which is obtained by connecting this point with this point. And I'm going to call that vector v plus u. Okay. Now, uh, so what you think, I'll tell you a little bit more of what's going on here. But um, just to clarify what I just said, that like this is analogous to 3 plus 5 being the same as 5 plus 3. You could uh, take your favorite vector u, I'm putting it here now. Again, you're free to move them around. So here goes u. And now I'm going to move v, but now v, v is going to begin where u ended. So notice that this is slightly different setup. Right? Because here, u starts where v ends, and now v starts where u ends. Okay, but if you f so if you follow the recipe, you could do this vector, which will now be u plus v. But well, I guess it takes some convincing that these two arrows are the same. So the takeaway is that, uh, uh, and you may not have even noticed that this requires some explanation because it may be just too obvious from the notation that I'm using. 
But the point is that u plus v is really the same as v plus u. Uh, this is important to realize because this, uh, there will be other operations with vectors where um, you actually have to be more careful and you cannot just move the, the, their locations around. Okay? And so one way to think about what's going on is that really, uh, like, you can sort of put these two uh, pictures together and you get a parallelogram. So you can just notice that you can put uh, V and V here. And then you have uh, U. You have here U. And notice that one of the diagonals is uh, U plus V. Or V plus U, which, which again is the same. Okay, and so that begs a question of, so let me just write that. formed by U and B. So you take two vectors U and B, you make a parallelogram whose sides are those corresponding vectors and one of the diagonals is the is the addition of the vectors okay now what would the other diagonal be uh, okay there are different ways to see this but let's see which one is the easiest let me just copy the picture here closer to each other. Okay. Now imagine that I take a copy of U, but I reverse the sign, so I do negative U here right remember that like this if you want to be uh, what do I mean by negative u that just means like take the number negative 1 and multiply it by u right which means just reverse the, the, the direction of u without changing its size but now you're free to do v plus negative u and if you follow my the recipe I just gave you v plus negative u gives you this vector which as you might guess looks exactly like this other diagonal okay so this diagonal corresponds to the vector v minus u. Okay? So if you want the, the complete picture of what's going on, when you have two vectors, u and v,
one of the diagonals will be uh, u plus v and one of the other diagonals will be v minus u Interpretation of um, of the uh, subtraction of two vectors. So adding two vectors gives you one of the diagonals. Subtracting two vectors gives you the other diagonal. Okay. Now let's see what else do I want to say. Just to finish this off before telling you how to compute these quantities, let's think about uh, how can this be useful for um, the perspective of position vectors. So. Let's go back here. I mentioned last time that if you have, you can think of your vectors say you have a point P So there's, if you have a point P, you can imagine using a vector. Uh, let me see, what do I want to do? Uh, you, can, you can imagine having a position vector, which is, I'm going to call RP, which starts at the origin and terminates at the point P. And if you have another position vector Q, which colors I use, but let me just try to make it more similar to what I drew there. So let me call this UR. P. And let me call this R Q. So you have these two position vectors. Okay. And then uh, there's this vector So basically, really you have like a parallelogram hiding a plain sight because you can imagine completing this up. Right, uh, I mean, it should have lowered this a little bit. But you can imagine completing this up and so there would be a vector that goes from P to Q. Which under this, which I'm doing, if you imagine I just took this parallelogram and I rotated it a little bit. And so this vector, this yellow vector should be uh, this green one minus this orange one. So let me just call this R uh, PQ. So R PQ is called a relative position vector. Uh, sometimes denoted also PQ like this. And this is called a relative position vector. So this is a vector from P to Q. Okay. 
and so this is uh, known as a relative position vector and if you follow the formula, if you compare the formula here it should have been the green one minus the orange one so this should be the green one which is R cubed minus the orange one which should be uh, R sub P and so just from this interpretation we actually found uh, a useful formula which I will write again here so that it's not too confusing which is that the vector from P to Q a vector that connects a point P with the point Q is uh, given by the difference in position vectors in order to notice that the order does matter because it's not the same as from what it's not the same going from P to Q as going from Q to P right there's a slight difference okay so this is a key formula and usually uh, is more useful than subtracting vectors is more useful than adding vectors because subtracting vectors has this interpretation of the relative position vector right so like there are forces say like gravitational force which depends just on the relative position between two objects right uh, or the Coulomb force so it's actually interesting that you can understand that like by taking the difference between two position vectors so what I'll do next time this is all fine but uh, I haven't told you how to compute things so next video I'll tell you how do we actually compute uh, these operations